All right, today we're gonna make some moonshine. Um, you could use crap corn. It's a lot cheaper. It's about six, seven, seven bucks a bag. I think it's 50 pounds in a bag. First time, uh, first mash. This is our first mash, so I'm gonna use flake corn. It's a little more expensive, but if, you, if, if all you can get is crack corn, you know a guy named Jimmy, he might be able to give you a deal. If not, you can buy it at the Rural King or someplace like that. Um, so I might use a little bit of this. But for the most part, we're gonna use flake corn today. 10 pounds of sugar, seven pounds of flake corn. This is more than seven pounds. I gotta weigh it out. I'll show you that. I'm gonna use two pounds of malted barley. And we're gonna use some of this uh, Red Star Dady yeast. Five gallons of water. All right, you wanna get five gallons of water in your pot. Get an eight gallon pot. Put five gallons of spring water in there. You wanna get going at least 150 degrees. If you got a thermometer, that's set for Celsius, that's somewhere between 60 and 70 is where you want to keep your water. It's always a good, good note. On your first batch, you want to use 10 gallon, or 10 pounds of sugar. When you go to reuse this and make a sour mash, you can use seven pounds, but your first batch, you want to use 10 pounds of sugar. Put that, all right, I got a brew bag makes shit a whole lot easier um, I got five pounds here I put your sugar in first and let it get good and dissolve and then you want to put seven pounds of flake corn in there I'm gonna get two more pounds all right two more pounds of flake corn so that's seven pounds total you want two pounds of, of malted barley You want to cook this for about two or three hours. You want to keep your water about 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to put the lid on it and we're going to stir it every, every so often. We'll come back to you. All right, it's been about an hour. We're uh, just checking it out. We stir it about every check on it about every five or ten minutes we got a thermometer it's digital and it's got a, like a an alarm on it if it gets too hot it starts beeping and lets us know you ought to get one they're really cool you get them off ebay for like 10 15 bucks but uh it's like grits you can taste it if you want if you're curious got to stir up them little clumps but it tastes like grits some really good grits we'll come back to you when we're cooling down all right it's been about two and a half hours we shut off the heat we're gonna let it cool down some people run it through a, uh, you know set it down and set their pan in some ice water cool it off quick I'm just gonna let it sit once it gets to about, once it gets to about room temperature or so, once it cools down, we'll add our yeast. We'll come back to you when we're when we're doing that. All right. So I've let it cool down quite a bit. To show you what it looks like. It's kind of dark in here. It's dark outside. You see it over here. It's cooled down to room temperature. These uh, these brew bags, man, they're the shit. So you might want to get some. And uh, normally, I would uh, get this yeast going separately, but in this case, I uh, I don't got to do it. This shit's perfect for it. And I'm using more than I need to. It's a little chilly out here, so we'll see some steam, but that that's about 
has cooled down enough to pitch this yeast. I'll show you. <clears throat> Another trick also, if you're gonna use cracked corn, you wanna let your cracked corn sit overnight in a batch of water. I use this flake stuff. Don't really gotta do that with that. But uh, this is what you use here. Red Star, Dady. You're supposed to use like 10 grams. I think I use 15 just, just to, just to get, be safe. And what I'm gonna do with this, cause I could, all, I could uh, ferment in this bucket. You could buy one of these buckets, these eight gallon uh, stills. Uh, this is a still and a ferment bucket, all that all in one. You get one of these on eBay for good and cheap. They're pretty cool. I'm also going to turn a keg into, I got a couple kegs I'm going to turn into uh, still. We want to ferment. So I got this ring here. Put around this. Then you just put the lid on it. It ferments right there in the in the pan. See if I get on there with the bag. If not, I'll tie that bag up with a string or something. I think I could get away with it. Leaving it on there. This is a really cool little still. I forget what I paid for it. Sometimes I get drunk and I buy shit off eBay. I forget I bought it. And then it just shows up and I'm like, oh shit, I got a still. <laughs> pretty fucking cool sometimes it sucks one time i ordered some he-man just because i've never seen him i was uh being nostalgic i guess i gave it to my kid he didn't really care about him see basically that lid on there i gotta put some water in here but Let's see, is that, that goes on there just like that. See that? It's got these clips, get it down tight. And just go around clipping it. Let that sit a couple weeks. Pretty fucking cool, man. Now I gotta do is put some water in here, some water in this thing, and wait a couple weeks. And we'll uh we'll come back to it whenever we're ready to distill this shit. That's what you want to see right there. See it burp? When it stops doing that, it's ready to cook. But I say just to be safe. 14 days two weeks two weeks shit it just did it again and when it does that you could smell it it smells like uh like corn beer <laughs> smells kind of good i like it um smells like corn beer or corn wine so that's basically what it is but uh it's been about a little over a week so uh, at the 14 day mark, we'll check this, see how often, see if you bang on it, that air and release, it'll come up also. But after, after 14 days, I'm gonna cook this, I'm gonna taste it and then I'm gonna cook it. It should be dry. If it's still real sweet, then you, you better let it go a little longer. That's the thing is if it's sweet, it's not finished. All right, it's been about 14 days. You can smell this shit. It smells like corn beer, corn flavored beer. I'm gonna take your lid off. Now every, every two or three days, I forgot to tell you this, every two or three days, you wanna open this up. This is what I do. Other people can do whatever the fuck they want. I take this and I shake this corn about about every two, three days. And I, I, I wiggled around a lot in there. So so I get that yeast up in that corn, eating it, eating that sugar. But I'm doing 
do that. And then you want to take, you get this on, you want to take this corn out. You want to drain it. Twisting it. It's like a big giant cheesecloth, pretty much. It's a brew bag. Brew bags are awesome. You want to squeeze all the liquid out of it. I put it in a bucket. I try and get some more liquid out of it when it's in the bucket. Then I put the liquid back in here. This should not be sweet any longer. That's how you tell when it's done. One more thing I forgot to show you too, is this has a false bottom in it. It's got a false bottom down in there. You see if I can't pull it up. A lot of people will be like, don't put your hand in there. I'm about to boil this shit, don't matter. We're getting ready to distill it. I can't pull it up, but there's a false bottom to keep all the stuff when we're cooking it, to keep all the stuff off the bottom from burning because you don't want nothing burnt in this. I'll keep it in there, but I'm gonna taste it. Um, wow. It tastes like corn and vodka. <laughs> Tastes like corn beer. It's not, it's not bad, but it's not awesome. But you can see where it's going. That's going to be a moonshine here real soon. So we're going to set it up. Let me get the liquid out of here first. I'm going to get the liquid out of this corn back in here. And then I'll show you us setting this still up. Right, now we're going to assemble the still. All right, you need a <clears throat> tub of, of water with ice in it. We're gonna set, let's see, I'm gonna set it on the table next to it, on the ground. Get you a little pump, a little water pump. With this kit, it comes with it. Make sure all your valves are closed for now. You're gonna run run water through here and out here and have one line coming and one line going. And it's all gonna come and go 
from the same bucket full of ice water. All right, before you start running, you wanna make sure that you got water, ice cold water, running through this hose and coming out that one. Now you can turn it off, but you wanna test that before you start running. You'll see the frost on the side of that. And then you want to set something up to where you can catch your alcohol. <clears throat> your first jar ain't going to be worth a shit. It's going to be poisonous. We got a propane tank, turkey fryer, everything set up. All right, you want to start your propane. You want to start it slow and low. Make sure you got a mason jar ready to collect some alcohol. Get your propane set. Better keep one of them close by, just in case some shit shit happens and goes wrong. It's always good to get you a fire extinguisher, especially if you're going to do it indoors. It's real windy out, so we're going to do it in the garage today. All right, we got heads going on. This, this first jar, you ain't going to want to drink. For us, we keep this above 90 degrees Celsius and it starts making liquor also you want to keep ice in this we're about to get a new bag put it in there you want to keep that water cold is 300 milliliters that's a little more than normal of a five gallon batch but we're going to do that just to be cautious this here is uh, a little bit out of the second um, we're testing it now it's coming up between 135 and 140 so we're gonna consider this the beginning of the hearts and we're gonna trash this put it in something use it to start a fire or something all right, all in all, you're going to get about a gallon of moonshine from a five gallon batch. Um, we got the heads, which we're going to we're going to use that for something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe gas. Um, we got some that was 135. We got a whole jar that was 120. All these were whole jars. And uh, these are all quart size jars. We got one that was 135, one that was 120. One that was 45, and then one that was like 20. We mixed them all together, and we end up with 110 proof uh, alcohol. I thought it was 90 proof. No, it was 110. We, we mixed them all together, and we ended up with 110 proof, uh, which was it, it's not bad. And uh, this is, you know, three quarters of a gallon. We, we did end up with a little bit of waste because a valve opened up on us and uh, we had to tighten the valve. When we did that, we lost some alcohol. Uh, but, you know, on average, you're gonna get about a gallon of moonshine, if not a little bit less. Uh, check out the next batch. The next batch will be a sour mash. Um, we got it over here. We mixed, uh, so far we got four pounds of corn, about three pounds, about three pounds of the leftover from the last mash, which is that, that's what's gonna make this a sour mash. We got that cracked corn in the bottom. We gotta stir it up. And we're gonna let that sit overnight. And we're gonna use what's left in here. Um, we're going to use what's left in the moonshine barrel. Or we're going to use what's left in the still. Bring it over here. Just dump it in. Okay. I'm going to dump it in hot, which that's fine. It don't, don't it ain't going to hurt it. 
as long as it's stirred up. We want to want to crack that corn loose and get the sugars out of it. That's 85. Yeah. 85. If you look at the Yeah. I can't carry this by myself. I'll burn the fuck out of myself. All right. Well, I'm gonna dump. I dumped one gallon of water in it. One gallon of spring water in it so far. It's still hot, but it don't matter because we're gonna cook it later anyways. With that liquid in there, we're gonna put in that bucket. I put another gallon in there, so so far my garage is kind of messy right now because uh, it's pouring rain outside. So that's got two gallons of spring water, and we're gonna see where we're at with the rest of that. That's sour mash right there. That's what makes it good. I think that's about five gallon mark. And it's all right to be a little over. We got an eight gallon bin. Maybe next time we'll get more than a gallon. And it'll be sour mash. I think that's all she wrote right there. Look at that. If you wanted to, that bag of corn, you could have split in half and made two mashes, which is probably what we should have did, but we, we gotta get some more barrels right now. We're not set up for it where we're at. Some of these guys, they, they do it every day. I make it for personal, recreational. I'm not out here trying to make money doing this. I just like to drink the shit. All right, I dumped it from the bucket. Let's clean this up. I dumped it back in here. I dumped it out of the bucket back into here. Now, this batch is gonna be a little bigger because we ended up using a little more stuff. So far, that's about seven gallons. We haven't added the malted barley and we haven't added the sugar yet. We're about to add that now. See where it's at. If I have to get rid of some of this liquid, I got this dump valve right here all i gotta do is turn it drain some of it um we're gonna cook it since that liquid was hot we don't have to cook it as long as we did before really if you didn't want to you wouldn't have to cook it but i like to try and get all them sugars loose out of that out of that corn and when you cook it like that it helps loosen that sugar up so that that yeast can eat it turn it into alcohol and you end up with some good strong liquor all right so you're gonna need to filter your moonshine it's a little cloudy stinks tastes like ass you run it to the filter and it's gonna make it a lot better if you don't you're gonna regret it nobody's gonna like it it's a regular old pitcher water filter you can buy it at the store All you need to do is run it through this filter. I run it through three times. Get it good and clean, makes it smell way better. That charcoal takes out all that stank from that corn. This is very necessary, trust me. If you don't do this, nobody's gonna like your moonshine, especially you. I'll show you the rest of that sour mash tomorrow. I'll add it onto this video. You see how clear that is? Look at that. That's like water coming out there. This shit don't smell too good until you filter it. It smells like rubbing alcohol and corn. I mean, if that's what you want, by all means, drink that nasty shit. But this is the way to go right here. Look how clear that is. Now 
Now smell it. It's better. It's way better. I'm gonna run it through three times. And get it clean. Get it good. That's how they make vodka. They'll do that, water it down with spring water. All vodka is is watered down moonshine with some fancy ass spring water added to it. Look at that. Crystal clear. It smells, it smells so much better, which means it's gonna taste so much better. All right, we're ready. Ready to get our sour mash going. We're gonna lift all this corn up out of here. It's been fermenting about two weeks, about 14 days. This is the second batch. It's our first sour mash. You can see it bubbling. We're gonna distill this now and get our first sour mash. It's gonna be good shit. All right, we got the rolling. If you uh, don't want to use ice cubes, you could freeze gallons of water, put in there and keep that cold. I got a couple gallons of water freezing in the freezer. We swap them out every once in a while. Once this, fill that water, make sure it's nice and cold. You want to see this like that. See that condensation. But we're... 90 degrees Celsius. That's when this thing starts kicking out alcohol. This is our sour mash. All right, we ran it from beginning to end. We had a bottle, we had a whole jar, uh, 122 proof sour mash. This is our sour mash now. It was a little bigger than five gallons. Had a whole jar of 110, and these are one liter bar jars. Or no, these are quarts. My bad. These are one quart jars. We had one, 122, one 110. Our third jar was 90. Fourth jar was 70 proof. Our fifth jar was 35. And we kept running it just because we wanted to see what had happened. The sixth jar. And that's 15 proof and it it started out clear and it gets cloudy at the end uh, But then you filter it and it smells good and tastes even better All right, so that's how you make your first and Second mash Second mash was a sour mash Now we got all this leftover Now we got all this leftover. I'm gonna split it in half I make two mashes out of it so I could run twice back to back, get twice as much. You can keep cutting it in half over and over if you want. So, same process that you've seen before. I'm going to take this and I'll put half in here, and half in here. I'll put some new corn in there, put some new sugar in each one of them. I'm going to split the liquid that's left over. And then I'm gonna make sure there's five gallons. There's a five gallon line on this bucket. I'll fill it up to there with spring water. Cook one, put it back in here. Cook another one, put it back in here. And let them sit for 14 more days. And then I'll run two sour mashes. Get twice the liquor. Don't forget your uh, don't forget your malted barley too. That's how you make moonshine. Like and subscribe, motherfucker.